Ladies and gentlemen, Alan Cumming. <laughs> Thank you very, very much indeed. Um, first of all, I would like to thank GLAAD, which I think is this really amazing organization. Uh, it really is an honor to receive this. Secondly, I would like to thank Jessica for coming out on our night off. Um, I know how hard that is. Um, I'm going to tell you a funny story about her, if you'd like. It's, um, <laughs> it's, um, <laughs> we did this film, Titus, and we had, on our very last day on the movie, there was a, we did a nude scene together, and um, they put a wee bit of gauze between your genitals when you do a nude scene so that you don't actually, you know, exchange any fluids. And, um, and, um, but they could see it from, because it was like a big kind of shot coming towards us that way. So, they, so some little PA had to pull the bit of gauze out from beneath us, and it was very tickly. And, um, and um, we've been talking about how, as you get older, uh, your gravity plays an effect on your body. And uh, with, with me, it's my, my balls. And with Jessica, <laughs> it's her breasts. And, um, and I'm, I, had, I was sort of lying on top of her like this. And I had, you know, my head like this. And I'm asleep. And one hand's on her, one of her breasts. And we're just chatting, as you do, you know, when you're like that. <laughs> and I was going like, you know, I don't know what you're talking about, Jess. I, th I think you've got fabulous tits. And she said, honey, if your hand wasn't there, that would be halfway around my back. <laughs> so, there we are. So it really means a lot, Jess, that you've uh, come out tonight to give me this. Thank you very much. I also want to thank, uh, you know, uh, everyone who's organized all this, uh, uh, like uh, Bianca from PMK and Joy from my office for uh, organizing me. <laughs> And uh, my boyfriend Grant for putting up with me whimpering all day about how nervous I'd be about doing this speech. Um, so now I'm going to do it. Uh, I, I want to say, in light of the, this award for uh, you know doing things to stamp out homophobia, I'd like to talk a little bit about what I feel about homophobia. And last year I went to the Glad Awards in San Francisco, and uh, it was a, it was a really uh, great evening, you know, because all those gay marriages had happened and everything. And Gavin Newsom, the mayor, was being honoured and. Everyone was full of hope and um, pride, and it was a really euphoric evening, and it really felt that there was this inexorable line between us and equal rights and gay marriage being accepted by everybody. Can you remember what that felt like? It was not so long ago. Um, of course, what happened was that in November we had that election and everything changed. And suddenly, those people who seemed so ignorant when they argued that if gay people were allowed to marry, then what would be next? People would want to marry their pets. And those demonstrators outside town halls with their anti-gay signs telling us that they are caring God's will was for all of us to fry in hell, let alone to be allowed to marry another of our filthy kind. All those people are now empowered and vindicated because the president of this country courted their vote. And so therefore, they must be right. And he, in fact, won, so surely now there can be no doubt. These people won. These people who hate us won. They think that we're not deserving of the most basic human rights, let alone their respect. I think we're living in a really scary time in this country, a time where difference is not tolerated. We are not allowed to be different and we are taught to fear others' differences, sexual, cultural, religious. And for those of us who do not wear the uniform and who think that being different is good and necessary and healthy, it's really not a good time. Because fear and loathing are being used to not only stamp us out, but to humiliate and shame us into believing that we are wrong and that, and that their way is the right and the only way. You're either with us or against us. We all know that phrase. <clears throat> that sentiment has pervaded the ethos and the actions of this entire country, and it now enables bullying and prejudice and persecution in the playgrounds and the workplaces and in millions of impressionable Americans' minds. Well, I am not with you, Mr. Bush. 
I am different. I think differently, I act, and I love differently. But I also pay you quite a large amount of tax dollars every year. <laughs> and I think that that alone entitles me to stay different and for you to respect my differences. I accept this award in memory of all the great men and women of the past who have spoken out and defended our rights and fought against homophobia and discrimination of all kinds, including, of course, the late Vito Russo. And I'm glad that I have, glad that I have been honored this year instead of last, because in the light of what has happened in the past year, we know that there's so much more need to stand up now and shout for not just acceptance, because I don't want to be accepted or tolerated. I want to be respected for who I am. And I'm tired and angry of being reminded that I am a second-class citizen in this country. This is not a time to pander to those people who hate us. It is not a time for politicians to subtly change their rhetoric on major issues to ensure acceptance from these people. It certainly isn't a time from, for the mayor of this great city that has always embraced people's differences to challenge a court ruling that says a gay marriage ban is unconstitutional. <laughs> Mr. Bloomberg. Mr. Bloomberg, you are not a New Yorker in my eyes. This is a time for outrage and protest. It's not a time to disappear back into the ghetto and be happy with what we've got. It's a time to show the terrified mass of middle America that hatred and respect are wrong and that we are not, and that we deserve all the basic rights that they don't even have to think twice about. A very wise, I'm nearly finished, a very wise president, I'm obviously not talking about the present one, <laughs> said, there is nothing to fear but fear itself. And I accept this honor, and it truly is a great honor. And I pledge to continue to do everything I can to stop the fear that has been propagated all around us. Thank you so much.